What's interesting about you, though, is you do have so much masculinity to you, but you are so feminine in that masculinity. And I think that's your gift. That's your talent of, you know, crossing over where women are in love with you and men are in love with you. Well, you know, <laughs> since I played Zeno, I, I suppose that is true in some way, but um, I don't think I ever really thought about it. You know, that's an, an observation that one makes from the outside. Yes, and I've met, you know, many actresses in the past two decades, and a good handful, if not more, have said you're their girl crush. And you were, yeah. So you really appeal to both men and women. And I think that's a really special quality because you're not intimidating. Even when I met you, you know, I thought, wow, she's so talented and beautiful and extraordinary. But you come out of the dressing room just taking your makeup off and doing this and hi, how's it going? And just so real. You didn't have anything to prove and you weren't on and you didn't have attitude. It was just like, I'm a real person. Yet you go like this and you're whoo, a oh, princess. That's so nice, thank you're, you. Yeah, and that's very rare too. Well, I think that's, well, my experience of theater, well, no, that's just how we do it, that you're a family. You know, mm -hmm. that you're a family of the team. You can't, there's no rankings yes. in the family um, of theater. Yes, but you're also trying to get my husband, who's a TV producer, to go say hi to the other cast members that he really liked oh, their yeah. talent. Oh, oh I go love let him. Yeah. Go tell him. He so you were just so yeah, loving sure. and giving. Oh, we're not here for long. Yeah. We're good to one another. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you have such a great sense of humor, oh, which you. I love. Yes. So who are your role models? Oh, that's a good question. So my mother, I was also Ray. Um, I've, I never really think about, I don't have heroes anymore because it's, I think I was disappointed, you know, the closer you look at other human mm -hmm. beings. But my early role models without knowing it would have been obviously my mum and dad, um, who are lovely people. And Catholic nuns, because I went to Catholic primary schools, they ran, they hadn't, there was no husbands, there was no men, run. they were running the schools, the finances, the everything, so... Um, they were role examples of female empowered females, believe it or not. And they're good women. I'm still in contact with them today, the Marist nuns. Um, really good, sensible women. I don't have any of those horror tales about um, Catholic nuns, though I'm, a, I'm not a religious person at all anymore. But um, I got to give them their due. They were the earliest examples of female empowerment and my mother and yeah what's the best piece of advice you got from them or from anyone else oh okay this is super useful because I thought of it this morning actually my mother said to me I was worried about that other people were talking about me or being mean or something she says uh, or I was suspecting that people were talking about me and she said oh for goodness sake Lucy Everybody, they're so busy worrying what other people are thinking about them, they're really not thinking about you. Like, that's been a load off my mind for many years, you know, to, if you just assume people are talking about you, you might as well assume they're not, because it's just wrong thinking. It's, you know, gets you on this really negative yes. vortex to think any other way. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I think that's a good way of conserving energy in a way. You spend mm -hmm. a lot of time dramatizing anticipating things that you, you have no idea about. So who can be bothered? Yes. Yeah, life goes much better when you're relaxed, you're yourself. Absolutely. And intention, you're not. So how do you know when you're on target with yourself, with your soul's purpose in your life? Like if someone's watching this and they're saying, I really want to have Lucy's life. I want to be a strong, powerful woman, but I want a family husband, kids, how do you balance it all and how do you know what decision to make, what to choose, what roles to choose? Yeah, that's it's hard, you know, that's really hard. I turned down a trip to India with my family. I mean, I pulled out of a trip to India with my family, a wonderful once in a lifetime trip to do Panto in Pasadena. And I've never done that before. Um, my children have been younger, so I made decisions. We went moved to New Zealand and we lived there and at the expense of my career. 
And then all of a sudden, it was okay for me to put my career first when my youngest is 12 and a very kind of independent little fellow. <laughs> and we Skype all the time. I, you know, I talk to them every other day. Um, but I've never done that before. It's, it's difficult. You've got a risk that your career will go away in those years when the, when the children need you the most. So did you take five or six years off? Yeah, I did. I mean, I've, I have worked. I've done a little bit of stage, mm -hmm. and I worked with my husband down in New Zealand. But I wasn't living in America. And if you leave right. LA, yes. agents and everybody are like, F forget you. You're not yes. here to do the parties. You've got to be on site. But my children are thus far well-adjusted, strong, loving, connected people doing well at school or in life and um, yeah it was worth it 